I'm Scott L. Miller. It is the 24th of January, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today we are going to be filming in the garden uh, with the Olympus, and we are testing out some new audio on the Tascam. So fingers crossed that this works. If it doesn't, we're going to be getting audio directly off of the Olympus, and that is not the best, but it will function. So we're trying. I have a lapel mic and I've learned a little bit more about the task cam. So I'm using, sorry, it went out of focus. We're using this bad boy uh, to try this out, which we've used this a bit, but I'm using it with lapel. So uh, trying to do a few experiments because I love the sound that comes off of the task cam when I'm able to make it work, but there's a lot of moving pieces and it's difficult to get it to work. So we're trying it out. It takes a lot of experimentation to get these. So today we are going to be doing the video on how we can, uh, how far we can go for $2,000 living in Nicaragua. Now you may notice that I'm sitting down for today's video, which I don't do all that often. And that's because I just finished, you'll notice I'm in the same shirt, just finished the three and a half mile walk that I did for you guys for yesterday's video. And I'm tired of standing. So, um, so today's challenge is a little bit tough. And before we get right down to it, just real quick, my day, uh, we had a bunch of furniture delivered to today. Um, some of you know from watching the show that April moved houses recently, and in doing so, she went from a very large house to a much smaller one, one about a third the size, I believe. And so she's got a lot of extra furniture, including a high top dining table with four chairs and several extra beds. Those were delivered today, and we've been anticipating that they were coming. And so we've got them. We had some the, early this morning. We moved all the furniture around so we could put more beds in. And uh, we are working on getting the back quarters, the guest quarters, uh, updated so that it can take a bed. But it needs a lot of work. It needs a lot of cleaning, like scrubbing, cleaning. It needs some roof repair. This isn't the rainy season, so we can hold off on that a little bit. But we got to get a lot of things done. Um, it's the one spot of the house that has roof damage, water damage from, from a leaky roof. So we got to fix the roof fix the water damage, but it does give us an opportunity to kind of tear out a lot of stuff and redo it a little bit more modern. So we may put a little bit of effort into it, um, but we aren't quite sure what we're gonna do yet. And we're still waiting for our maintenance guy to give us some information about how that's gonna end up uh, coming out. So we're working on that and working on getting internet working around the house. Uh, we've started rolling out new Unify uh, wireless gear because it's a really large space. So we're experimenting with some uh, mesh Wi-Fi and like real mesh. This is enterprise, not where people throw around the word mesh and don't know what, the, what it means. Um, we're actually doing um, a combination of wired and meshed uh, Wi-Fi units. And we have everything in a Unify controller and monitoring the house and learning a lot. But our internet has been absolutely terrible this week and we're barely able to function, but not because of the Wi-Fi, because the internet's having a problem. Um, but we've heard it's bad even in Managua right now, so we're not too concerned, but it's a significant problem. We are continuing to struggle uh, to try to get our, um, our Teco uh, installed. Now, I don't believe we told the whole story because on Sunday, we were, uh, I'm sorry, on Saturday, they were supposed to come here and visit us and they didn't show up. What we found out, uh, I think yesterday, maybe today, is that our rep actually was in an accident and we had to get a new rep assigned and we're getting stuff done sometime this week. It is scheduled in two days for it to be uh, signed on Thursday, I believe. Um, and so if all goes well, we should be getting uh, at least the document signed and then hopefully next week actually getting our new fiber internet put in. That is an ordeal, um, but at least it is moving forward and uh, and we're getting things fixed one little bit at a time. Um, okay, so all that new furniture came today and then this afternoon I just had meetings like crazy and then my evening was completely destroyed. At 6.45 we had a customer emergency come in and I worked until midnight. So tired after that. So this was a really long day for me. Um, and again, this is Tuesday. Uh, and then we have a busy week scheduled. Thursday, we have, uh, we already know, we have a very big event to attend in the evening. So we've got a lot of stuff going on already. And, and today just set me back. But let's get to today, today's topic. How far can you realistically go on $2,000? Now, this is very subjective, right? So this is going to be a tough one. When we did the can you survive on $2,000 for a year, challenge, the question uh, is a little bit more discreet. Here's how much you have. Can you make it this far? And the answer was kind of maybe-ish, right? It'd be extremely hard and you'd be unhappy. Um, but this question is much more difficult. Living moderately well, but being frugal, 
what exactly could you do with $2,000? If you were here, now remember, not including the flights, because those can vary, right? You could get here for 100 bucks or you could get here for $10,000, depending on where you come from and how you like to fly and where you, like, it's just a lot of variables that we don't control at all and have no knowledge of, right? You can go figure out your plane situation or drive down and maybe you live in Costa Rica and it's, it's a $20 drive, like it, like it could be anything. Um, uh, but what is $2,000 mean for you and what city are you in? All those things are gonna uh, really affect this. So what we're gonna try to do is build up a budget and see from there what it's gonna take for you. To make things easy, let's assume you're getting an apartment with utilities included, and many places do this. If they're not, then it's gonna be a little bit cheaper and the utilities will be about the difference, right? Um, and we'll assume you're not gonna do air conditioning. If you wanna do a place with air conditioning, that's gonna raise the price of the rent and it's gonna raise the price of the electricity. And that will be a factor that you just, you just have to include, but you'll know about what that is and you can figure it out for the size of space. And that said, if you're looking at doing air conditioning, one of the things you want to do is make sure you're air conditioning small spaces. So maybe you air condition a bedroom, but not the rest of the house. That will minimize that. And you don't air condition when you're not there, anything like that. You only air condition to the amount that you need. You learn to make it less. The more you, you are in air conditioning, the harder your adjustment to Nicaragua is going to be. The more air conditioning you use, the more you will need to use and so forth. So minimize it, use it as little of the day as possible, air condition as little of your house as possible and that will assist greatly. Okay, so for the apartment. Now, if we're looking, we're, so the, the question was not, can I do it in Leon or Granada or San Juan del Sur? So we're going to assume we're being a little bit flexible, but we're not gonna go to like, well, if you lived out on a farm in the country, no. We're going to say if you were to go into a place like Matagalpa or Hinotega uh, and you were to look for an apartment that was very frugal, what could you do? And we're going to make an estimate. Now, I've not looked for an apartment in this particular price range for a while, but we're going to say as an expat, you may be able to find an apartment that you would be reasonably happy with for $200 per month. Now, we know some really amazing houses are available. Sorry for my dog. <laughs> coughing up grass. Uh, we know you can get some really amazing houses in the $300 to $400 range right here in Leon, which is not one of the lowest cost cities. So if you're looking for an apartment, not a house and a smaller place, that's just one or two bedrooms, just one bath, uh, are willing to compromise on maybe not being in the, the prime tourist areas or whatever, you have a very decent opportunity to get into the $200 range for your apartment. And yes, can you get cheaper than that? Absolutely. But the challenge is about can you do it and live pretty well? And part of that living pretty well is you do wanna be in a city. So we're not looking at little villages or anything like that. So we're playing around with some numbers here to try to make it make sense. $200 I think is a pretty decent number to work with. Do a little bit of consideration. Well, I really wanna be in Managua. You may wanna tweak that up a little bit, but 350 would be really high. So we're not talking about a big tweak. It may be that you need to spend 250. And if you're really willing to compromise on your housing, you could get lower, even as close to like 150. If you really wanna go crazy, I know you can get down to 120 and still have a kitchen here in uh, Leon. Um, other cities, again, could be a little bit cheaper, uh, Matagalpa especially. Um, if, uh, if you're willing to go to the extreme, of course, like we did for the $2,000 over a year challenge, it's only $80 for a place with uh, utilities included, but you can't cook for yourself. There's no spot to put a fridge, there's no air conditioning. So the compromise is more than we're gonna consider for this particular challenge, but you have those numbers to work with in your own case. Now, the person who asked the question did say they would be willing to cook for themselves much of the time. This is something that's worth really discussing because um, it is a common thing for Americans to say, well, I wanna save money, so I'm gonna go to the grocery store and cook for myself. And that makes a lot of sense in an American context. When you're coming into Nicaragua, that may not make sense. Cooking for yourself often will actually cost more than if you're willing to eat local Nicaraguan food in a local Nicaraguan way. Uh, a lot of Nicaraguans go out to fritangas and similar street food vendors and get their food that way. And this actually eliminates a lot of cost. You don't have to have appliances, which in a short term uh, rental is going to be a problem. You don't have to have a stove and deal with gas delivery. You don't have to learn how to cook local food. You don't have to learn how to shop for local food. All those things take time and you will lose a bit of money while you learn to do it. If you're gonna live here for the rest of your life, of course, taking the time to do that is well worth it. But if you're looking to be here for how long can I live on $2,000, you're probably going to find all the effort put into cooking for yourself almost completely lost, right? You're gonna put in all this effort and maybe not save money. You may spend more 
Um, but the problem is that if you go with local food, you're gonna be very constrained. You can only eat local food, and there may be things that you want that you're not gonna be able to easily do. So you really have to play around with this, but don't get the idea that simply by cooking for yourself, you're gonna stretch the budget much farther than if you don't cook for yourself. That may not, that may not be true at all. The opposite may end up being true. It is common for Nicaraguans to not have their own kitchens at home or to have very minimal ones, right? So the idea that you're gonna have an, uh, a refrigerator in your apartment may not be universal. Many apartments will come with them, but if you don't have one, again, it's gonna lower the cost of the rent because you're not gonna have to have that electricity. They don't have to provide that appliance. That's a major expense here. And so like those student apartments that we showed uh, a week ago, um, those did not have refrigerators or a kitchen. And that brought the price way down. By doing so, you can, now you don't probably don't wanna have that level of student housing, but if you had a place where you didn't have to pay the electric for the refrigerator and you didn't have to pay for the refrigerator, that money, just the money that would go into that may be enough to feed you for a significant portion of the month. So let's talk about that. If you're going out to eat, what is it going to cost? This is difficult uh, to really calculate because what types of food you like to eat, what type of restaurants you want to go to and where you're going to do so is going to be a huge factor. Plus, how much do you feel you want to eat? How often do you want to have a beer? So it's more, let's talk about what prices are. If you're going out to eat at a Fritanga, a single meal can easily be in the one to $3 range, right? And that can be a pretty large meal. So you may only need to do that say twice a day. Even if you're gonna go into the high end, if you're gonna eat uh, three really large local meals a day, you should be able to eat uh, well under $10 and be completely uh, calorically filled. You will not be challenged. You could be gaining weight, even if you're out walking everywhere, right? So uh, if you gave yourself a $10 per day or $300 per month budget, you could eat on that without concern. You may not like the food you're going to have. That's always a problem, but you're going to be able to get beef. You're going to be able to get pork. You're going to be able to get chicken. You're going to be able to get fish. You're going to be able to get rice and beans, potatoes, yucca, eggplant, tomatoes, onions, all the fruits, all that kind of stuff. You're going to be eating and eating a lot of it. So you're, you've got a decent variety at that price range eating on the street. You may not like the styles because it's going to be a lot of asada, a lot of grill, um, but there are going to be options that are reasonably healthy and what the locals eat. And of course, a lot of eggs. Eggs are often served even at night. You can go out and get a lot of uh, rice and beans and eggs um, and cheeses. Queso frito is a common thing at the Fritangas and that is just uh, a very low fat local cheese that they fry in a pan. It's actually quite tasty. It varies a lot city to city uh, and even um, Fritanga to Fritanga. So you can find some that you love and some that you don't. If you're uh, familiar with paneer from India, it is in that kind of cheese family. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, it would be a little bit, just the tiniest bit closer to tofu or a compressed cottage cheese in America. But it's, it's more, if you know paneer, that's a better example. Uh, plus paneer is actually cheese. So, uh, so that's what a low end budget is gonna look like. And this is per person, of course. Now, if you wanna go to a higher end, you could be spending $20 on a meal at a restaurant that can happen. Now in America, you could be spending $100 on that meal. So this is not something you would probably do very often. Living in Nicaragua, you would probably keep, and if you're cooking at home, these are probably good target numbers. You could cook for yourself for between five and $10 per day. But if, that, if you're able to eat for $5 at home, there's a good chance you could eat out at a Fritanga for $5 as well. So just consider that it may not be worth cooking at home, especially if you're in the lower numbers or if you want to move around. Because if you're going to travel at all, you're going to find, oh, I can't, I can't do those things because then I'm, I don't have my food from home and now I have to eat in restaurants and I've blown my budget by bad planning. That is the advantage of doing restaurants um, for everything is that you can be completely mobile. You could get an apartment that's in Madagalpa for, for a couple weeks and then one somewhere else for a couple weeks and, and just move your stuff and put everything in a backpack. And that, that can work pretty well. Um, you can send laundry out or you can do it at home. You can do laundry manually. Most people do. For many things, getting a service to do it makes sense. Even when I was traveling in Guatemala, it made sense. I, I took very little luggage with me and I simply paid a laundry service at a very high end location. Not the laundry service being high end, just the town I was in was a very pricey town. And even so, I think I spent $2 to have my laundry done. Not the cost of the machine. That was the cost of having someone 
take care of my laundry in a machine, dry it, fold it, and have it ready for me. I didn't have to buy soap because maybe I wouldn't use all of the soap on the trip. I didn't have to like I didn't have to deal with anything. Right? Those things when you're a traveler often end up making sense. Those would be luxuries if you were living at home because of course you will go through a hundred boxes of soap and it would never make sense to pay for someone else's partial box of soap. But when you are not gonna go through a box of soap, it doesn't make sense. Uh, so those are places you can potentially save money again and maybe even make it easier for you, right? This is not necessarily a luxury item, simply a practical one. Um, now, it is worth noting going to Managua and going out for a relatively fancy Italian dinner, for example, I can get a pasta dish that's, that's with salmon, right, for $10. So that's, the, are there places here in Leon where I could spend more than $10 on dinner? Absolutely. Sua is a great example. If I'm going to get like the lasagna, that I believe is over $10. Um, but a lot of the meals are under $10. A lot of pizzas are under $10. So um, if you're going to, for example, I don't have exact prices, but I think a, a relatively large pizza from Hollywood is 380 cord. That's about $11. But that is enough to feed um, a minimum of two people if not four people for a dinner, uh, or what we often do is two people for dinner and two people for lunch the next day. Uh, so doing things like getting um, leftovers and storing them or whatever, that means that we're spending $11 for four meals, and that's two people. So all these numbers I'm doing based on one person, a single pizza could last you for four meals, potentially, right? Only you know how much a pizza you're gonna eat, but that's a good example that a full large pizza uh, is about $11. And there's definitely cheaper pizzas. That's going to a high-end place with really high quality food. It's actually the place uh, is owned by the owners of the house that I'm recording in. Um, but, and there's lots of pizza places in the same price range. So if you're eating pizza like that, you have variety. You also have the option of living farther out and using delivery services. Those delivery services rarely cost very much. We use Ugo quite a bit. Delivery is often one to two dollars. And if you pay attention on the app, you can generally get a two dollar discount so in many cases our delivery is free now we do notice a lot of the restaurants raise the cost when they're doing delivery because they're paying ugo but they're paying a little bit you're paying a little bit extra on the food they make a little bit less but they don't have to serve you pay a server have tips whatever um, now i do tip my drivers so calculate that into your cost uh, but um, we're getting ugo delivery quite often and it's cheaper than going into the city for things so that's also an option um, if you're eating stuff like pupusas we can feed many people for five to six dollars um, so it depends on the kind of food you're going to get but realistically a ten dollar per person budget per day will easily feed you and allow you to go out to eat meaning not just street food but actually go to restaurants from time to time especially if you're well i'm going to skip breakfast today because we're going to do a fancy dinner you can move some money around um, and and make it go decently far you can find a lot of the prices online especially of places like sua or sundance uh jalisco or uh, el sopan uh, la antigua by el sopan places like that you'll be able to look up online and see real world prices those are in cord but remember it's 36 cord to the dollar so just whatever number you see if you see 380 divide that by 36 and you get about 11 a little bit less ten dollars and 70 cents or something that will tell you what that pizza, hollywood pizza um valenti's pizza uh, um, Oasis del Sabor, a whole bunch of places, crepes, pizzas, calzones, all those things. Look up those prices, see what you would want to eat and calculate what a meal would be. Uh, uh, the place that I get the pasta from in uh, the capital is Pane y Vino. Um, and, and, and you, you can really easily see what things are going to cost. Now, if you're going to start drinking sangria or wine or having cocktails, your prices are going to go way up because you're going to spend quite a bit on those luxury drinks. That's what happens to me. Uh, but if you want to have a beer, then that's going to bring it way down. In many cases, your beer is about a dollar to a dollar twenty. Uh, and that's for a nice ice cold bottle of Tonya, Victoria Classico, whatever, Classico. And uh, uh, if you're looking for a seltzer, those are going to vary, um, but you're looking at about a dollar fifty for a typical seltzer. Um, and if you're looking for rum, I don't know the exact prices, but that can be pretty cheap depending on how you buy it and what kind of rum you're willing to have. Uh, if you're willing to forego sodas, that's going to save you a lot of money. Of course, getting like Coca-Cola or even Pepsi is a pretty big price premium over just getting water. 
uh, and, and generally they're going to cost a little bit more than beer. So if you're willing to go with tap water, which is fine, um, Vaso de Agua con Hielo, uh, you're in great shape, right? It's generally going to be a really, really low cost meal and you can go even to pretty fancy restaurants. And if you're looking for entertainment, lots of restaurants that are quite affordable have great entertainment options many nights of the week. So consider going out to a Duomo or going to, um, uh, no, uh, uh, El Bodigón, right? Places like that, you can have, uh, I, I will go out and get a, a Caesar salad and a beer, right? And I may only spend $5 on a single person for a full, you know, I have a drink, maybe two, I have food, and I have entertainment for the night for hours, right? Sit and watch a really good band play. That can be a great night out for very little money. Most places are not gonna have a cover charge for that. A lot of the clubs, if you're not going out on the prime nights, on the prime nights, often they'll charge a cover because they're packed, right? And they might as well charge a dollar, two dollars for, for a cover because they know that they're gonna be full no matter what they charge. So if they don't, there's just lost revenue. But most of the nights you can go to places like Geckos and do some dancing and have a band or go to places like 23 Bar. These are Leon examples but the same will be in, in all the cities. Go to a place like 23 Bar and, and have like a really big club dance scene kind of thing. And, and if you're really on a budget, you could go and dance for free, but I mean, realistically, you're gonna want a beer and they're not gonna be happy if you don't get anything. But if you get one or two beers, you could make a really good, fun, long night out for between two and three dollars. And that could be an entire evening. Um, it's common for people to go at say 10 o'clock and dance until four o'clock in the morning, right? So you could have a very long, fun club night out or doing karaoke at Gekitos. There is no cover charge. Go and have a drink, just get a beer. A lot of people go and have one or two beers, right? And if you're going in a group, your prices can come down because you can buy uh, uh, cubatazos, which are, are like six beers in a bucket, a half dozen beers with ice. You get a little bit of a discount on that. I think it's 235 cords. So do the math. I think that's, I think that's like a flat $6 for six beers. Uh, and so if you have, say, three people and you're splitting that, you're each paying, putting in $2, right? You're in great shape to have a little bit cheaper beer and get through the night uh, with a couple drinks and go sing. You know, you can go sing four songs, spend a couple hours uh, with two beers and, and be pretty happy. So you're going to want to gauge. For me, my food budget is above $10 a day. It just makes sense to spend a little bit more um, because I'm not on an extreme challenge. But if that's a thing you're trying to do, you can do that and it you may get really far if you are comfortable only going out for entertainment one time a week and you're doing really frugal either cooking for yourself or just for tonga or simple local food the other five or six days a week if you're skipping a few meals then that ten dollar budget could work as an average for as long as you want to do it make break that 11 or 12 and you have a lot of extra breathing room on that so if we're going to go out we're going to say for the for this discussion we're going to say 300 dollars a month is your budget for food but certainly consider moving that up a little bit. You're, you're being very frugal, but it can be done. You can live decently well. That gives you $500 that we're spending in a month. Now, you're probably gonna want some transportation. This is gonna vary a lot. Are you hanging out at home? Are you um, uh, going into a city a lot? Are you walkable distance to things? If you're walking and just never need transportation, that's fantastic. Your budget's gonna go that much farther. For us, we generally are using a fair amount of transportation, so I would figure another $100 a month because we're constantly moving. But that's a place you could shift that into food and live better if you can walk everywhere or maybe shift $50 into food and $50 into housing and, and uh, you know, be in a little bit better location so you don't need that transportation. Uh, certainly, if you're in a place like downtown Matagalpa, you could live and just walk everywhere. I would, I would love it. It would be fantastic, right? So we're only looking at this point, $600 is our per month cost. Now we have a few ancillary things you're gonna need. One of them being your phones. That's gonna be $11 a month. We did that on the other one. That's not gonna really change, right? It doesn't matter if you wanna go like baller service or the cheap one, it's gonna be about $11 a month for Tigo or Claro. Uh, so just tack that on and then to be safe, let's say about $50 of ancillaries every month of things that we just haven't calculated. You're going to go out and you're going to buy a few random souvenirs. You're going to want to take an extra taxi. You're going to want to just buy an article of clothing or whatever. You're going to want to go shopping a little bit uh, for soaps for the house for, you know, simple things. 
figure $50 a month of additional spending um, and you're probably in decent shape. I may have forgotten some big item, but I don't think so, right? So with these numbers, I'm looking at about $665, $667 per month is about where we just came out with an explanation of how each of the numbers came to be. And that means that you could live really comfortably in, in, in pretty reasonable terms for three months in Nicaragua on $2,000 um, with a lot of room to maneuver that to, I really want a nicer apartment, I really want better food, I really want whatever. And you can see from that, if you wanted to move up to, well, I really wanna be able to go out and get kind of fancier food on a really regular basis, okay then make that a thousand dollars a month give yourself an extra ten dollars a day and suddenly you're at uh, one thousand a month you get two months of really good living for two thousand dollars that's a great way to look at it uh, i really do recommend um, a place like madagalpa if you're looking to do a challenge like that i feel that you would get kind of maximum bang for your buck. Uh, other places that would do really well would be Chinandega. Leon would be decently well. Uh, Hinotepe, but there's much less to do. If you if you're really don't care about entertainment, Hinotepe, uh, Hinotega, sorry, will work pretty well. Hinotepe di Riambra, they're gonna be pretty good options as well. Places that are gonna be tough. Managua, you could do it, but it's gonna be harder, right? The food's gonna be cost a little bit more. The apartments are gonna cost a little bit more. Granada is gonna be really hard because everything, food and housing go way up in Granada. San Juan del Sur, even more than Granada. You're talking really expensive. Rivas is probably okay. Uh, Ometepe, probably on the expensive side, that's gonna be a challenge too. There's much less to work with there. Um, but those kind of big cities um, are gonna be your options. And of course, anytime you wanna get out in the country, if you were willing to be in a village or that was exciting for you, then in theory, you can go even farther. If you wanted to be in some little spot like uh, Nagarote, and you could, f you could probably find an apartment for 10% less. Your food is probably gonna be 10% less. Your nighttime entertainment could be 20% less. And um, you don't need any transportation or if you do, it's not going to be a taxi, it's going to be a tricycle. That could be half. Um, and so if you're willing to do small village life and you're just interested in walking around, maybe you're a writer, maybe you just want to watch TV, maybe you just want to be a photographer in a country setting, then, then you could really go far. Then the three months is easy, right? You may even be looking at four months, three and a half months, right? So those are things you can play with. I hope this was useful. Um, I hope that gave you some ideas. I'd really like to, to at some point take a thousand dollar budget and go see if I can live somewhere. That would be really fun, right? Here's what a thousand dollars got me in a month. Um, that would be really interesting, but that would take an entire month of my time and is very hard to do. Um, I do have to work and stuff. And so it's difficult because a lot of things are just set budgets because I have to have certain things in order to keep the wheels on the cart, so to speak. Um, anyway, thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Um, there should be a lot of comments, questions, ideas about this challenge. Get down. What have I missed in pricing? Where could we save money? Where would you spend money that's different than where I would? Um, does that answer the question that was asked? All that. Get down there. Let's discuss. I love Love all the, the community discussion and this week has been fantastic right and you guys saw me doing karaoke the other night I got a lot of great food feedback on that thank you everyone that's a great example though that's a thing that we do that cost almost nothing and we really enjoy a lot of fun here um, and great for groups make friends go out with friends sit outside that's what Nicaraguans do at night they pull up their chairs they sit out on the road yes they have a beer but they go to the grocery store or the pulperia they get really cheap beers and they sit out for very very low cost and milk a beer over a period of hours with friends sitting on the street there's no extra overhead that is the Nicaraguan thing that's how people live really cheaply here when you're local if you can do that as a foreigner you're gonna get that much farther right and love it that much more it'll be fantastic um, and uh, if you want to support the channel and help make it possible for me to live in Nicaragua and make these videos for you, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That's kind of like Patreon. It comes straight to me. It really makes a difference. It is what pays for this channel to happen and the equipment and all that stuff. And we're going to be talking about the equipment situation tomorrow because we have big news and new news about that. So that's exciting. And uh, remember to post on social media. Get it on Facebook. Get it on Instagram. Get it on Twitter. I don't have any of those things. Well, I have Instagram. That's how you reach me. But other, I don't have Facebook. So I, I rely on you guys to post that for people uh, to find out about the show. Put it on Reddit. All those things. And I will see all of you tomorrow.